Hey everyone, this is Derek, and in this video we're going to look at applications and derivatives. Um, this particular homework, the first couple problems are really super simple. They just read a graph and find the min or max. And then after that, every single problem has a video associated with it. So I'm just going to kind of do one each to uh, introduce the new concepts here. And then, like I said, there's lots of help at the individual problems if you get stuck somewhere. So, uh, first off, let's uh, recall from probably 116, uh, profit, revenue, and cost. So, profit is how much money you make, revenue is how much money you take in, cost is how much money you spent to, to make the thing. So, you do how much money you took in minus how much money you spent, and then that's going to be your profit. Remember, profit can be positive or negative. Um, so this quarter, we're going to have marginals on our revenue, cost, and profit. And what the marginals are is it's basically just going to be the derivative of those functions. And so like down here, if we have R of X is representing our revenue, then our marginal revenue, capital R, uh, MR with a bar, sometimes they use the bar, sometimes they don't. That's going to be the same thing as our, our derivative of our revenue function. And so what, that's, what the marginals do is they give you the rate of change at that particular instant um, of how the, how the marginal is changing. Um, they also, if I read the definition here, uh, the marginal revenue, revenue is an approximation of the change of revenue associated with one unit change for the number of units sold. Um, and so what that whole bit means is that if you have a function and say you've sold 100 of these things and you want to see how much you're going to make off the 101st one, you can take the derivative of it, evaluate it at 100, and that will be an approximation of the revenue you would generate by selling the 101st unit. Um, and the reason is it's because that tangent is an approximation um, to the curve, right? So if I had some sort of curve like this and a tangent, it's very close to what that next step up would be for kind of a one-step increase. Uh, marginal cost and marginal profit, exact same idea as the revenue. Um, and to find marginal profit, we can, we can generate a profit equation first out of these and then take the derivative of that. Um, rather than doing doing the derivative of each of these separate. Uh, last thing to talk about is average cost. So if our cost function is C of X, then um, the per unit average cost function is going to be C bar equals C of X over X. So all this means is we're taking the total, the cost, and then we're dividing by the number of units, right? So if I spent $500 making something, and um, I made five of them, then I would know I, that I spent $100 per unit. So that's what this is showing. And we can do that with money, but we're also going to see we can do it with functions, um, where we just actually divide the function by the X, and then we have a function that will give us average cost per unit. So those are our definitions. Let me show you how that looks in some examples. Okay, this first one, not too terrible. So we got the cost of producing X units of stuffed alligator toys is that function right there. Find the marginal cost at the production level of a thousand units. So if I'm looking for marginal, that means the marginal cost is the same thing as finding C prime of X. And so here's our cost function. So I'll just go two times that point zero zero two, maybe zero zero four X and then one times six for plus six. So there's our marginal cost function, and then we want to find the marginal cost at a thousand units. So we'll say C prime at a thousand, and just plug in a thousand there, and then just throw that, um, actually that's four and six, that's 10. So that one's not too hard to work out. So uh, it looks like the cost to produce uh, would be $10 per unit. Um, and again, that's because marginal cost rate is giving us our cost per change in one unit. Okay, so this one, suppose the company's revenue function is given by R of Q equals this stuff here, and its cost function is given by C of Q equals that stuff there, where Q is in hundreds and the uh, units sold are produced while R of Q and C of Q are total dollars revenue cost respectively. Okay, so Q is gonna be hundreds. I think when they originally wrote this question that mattered more than it does now that they fixed it up. Um, so I think we just have to, we don't have to do much with that for the way they reworded it. Uh, so we are supposed to, for part A, find a simplified expression for the marginal profit function. So if I wanna find MP, uh, marginal profit, that means that then I need the derivative of the profit function, right? So that means I need a profit function, which I don't quite have, but I do have revenue and cost. 
And then if we go back here, remember profit equals revenue minus cost. So anytime I got revenue and cost, I can always get profit. So we're gonna say P of X is going to, oh, that should actually be a Q. Um, I'm gonna use capital Qs because my lowercase Qs look like A's and nines and all sorts of things. So I'm gonna use a capital Q just to try to make it clear. Um, so P of Q is going to equal um, revenue. So that's right there. So revenue minus um, cost. And there's a revenue function. minus our cost function. And then cleaning this up a little bit, we're gonna get P of Q equals negative Q cubed plus 370 Q squared. Uh, I'll go descending order here, so minus 11 Q and then minus 220. And so that's our profit function, but that wasn't what it asked for. It asked for our marginal profit. So that means we have to find the derivative of that. So we'll find P prime of Q. And that's going to go negative 3Q. Um, and then 2 times that would be 740. Oops, that should be squared. And then 1 times minus 11 for minus 11. So that would be our marginal profit function. And then part B is going to ask us um, how many items need to be sold to maximize profits, round to two decimals. And so for this on the computer, you're just going to put the answer in just like it comes out when you do it on the calculator. Um, and so I'll show you that part next. Okay, so then for part B, um, I just wrote down the derivative from the last page, and then here's our quadratic formula, um, which we're going to need to solve this. So in this case, we're going to do... Um, we're trying to figure out how many items we need to sell to maximize profits. So remember, if we're looking for a maximum, that's going to be where the derivative is zero. So what we're going to do is set um, uh, P prime of Q to zero and then solve. Um, unfortunately, this does not factor. And so that's where we're going to use the quadratic formula um, to get our two solutions. So this will be... Um, it's usually written with an X, but now we would be using Q because that's our, our variable. So Q equals, and this is our A and our B and our C right there. So Q equals negative 740 plus or minus uh, 740 squared minus 4 times A is negative 3 times C is negative 11 and all over 2 times negative 3. And then once you get your quadratic formula set up, you're gonna throw all that mess into a calculator and here's what it, that part should come out to. So once I put that in the calculator, I got this. And then if you do uh, the square root of that value, it'll come out to here. Um, so when I do the root here, I get that 739.91, yada, yada. And you do need those decimal places. Um, so this is representing two distinct solutions. So we're gonna have two values of Q here. Um, if I go negative 7040 plus this, um, I'll have some little decimal number, right? Um, like 0.09 or something, and then dividing that by, uh, it'd be negative 0.09 divided by negative six. And so there I'm gonna get Q equals 0 0.01487 to four decimals is what I got. And if I do negative 240, Minus this, I get some bigger number right around, you know, 1480 divided by negative six. And throwing that in the calculator, I get this 246.6518. So what we have found is the critical values. So these are the places where we would have a min or a max, but they're profits. So we want to make sure we're actually maximizing them, right? And not minimizing them. So to figure out whether or not we have, um, a min or a max, we'll find the second derivative. So coming back up here, um, I think it will slip over here with it. We're gonna have P double prime of Q is gonna be two times that three is gonna make negative six Q and then one times the 740. 
And then remember with our second derivative test, if we evaluate the function at um, the critical values, that tells us uh, the concavity, which tells us whether or not we have a, a min or a max. So if the second derivative is greater than zero, we have a minimum. If the second derivative is uh, less than zero, that's where we're going to have a maximum. So plugging these values in, here this is a very small little number, right? And um, if I put this in, this is going to be not very much plus 740, so that will be positive. So P double prime of 0 0.01487 um, is going to be greater than zero. And we don't really care what, is greater than zero is all we need. So that's a min. Um, and this is profit, so we want to maximize that. So hopefully this one should do it. And so if I do P double prime of that value, um, sorry, that will be um, 246, right, times negative 6 is going to be, you know, close to negative 1,500 plus that. So that is going to be less than 0, and so that is going to be our maximum. So this is the one, and then it wants it rounded to two decimal places because it's in hundreds. So here we would say 246, oops, 246. 0.65 is what we would enter in the computer. Okay, and then this last one, uh, for the given cost function, that we're supposed to find lots and lots of things. So for part A, the cost of, at the production level is 1,650 units. Okay, that's super friendly. So for A, we just have to find C of 1,650. So we're just plugging in, in 1,650. And you'll just toss all that in the calculator, and then it comes out to this big old number. And that's that. Uh, for B, uh, find the average cost at the production level of uh, 1650. So there are a couple of ways I could do this. I could just take this number and divide it by that, and that would be my average cost because I spent that much. I made that many. There it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make an average cost function because we're going to need it for parts D and E. So even though there's an easier way to do B, that's fine. You're still going to have to do it down here. So let me make my function. Um, this is my cost function. And remember from back here, uh, C bar is going to be C of X divided by X, so our total cost divided by our total units. So I can just take this. So that is C of X, and then I'm going to divide it by X, and that will equal um, our average cost. So if I clean this up a little bit, um, this is going to be, that's funny in the notes, I, I changed it around. Um, I actually ended up writing descending order when I did notes. I think I will stick with that. So um, I went X squared over X, and I got X. Um, 500x over x, so those are canceling, so plus 500, and then this over the x. Um, so that would be our average cost function. Um, I can also write this this way um, using a negative exponent, which will be handy when we go down to find um, uh, some derivatives on this. And, oops, I'm actually supposed to find the average cost at 1650. So now that I've done that, I would go um, C bar of 1650. And if you plunk that in right here for these X's, you will get um, kind of a crappy number, 2160.2424. And I think the 24 just went on forever. For part C, it's asking us to find the marginal cost um, at the production level of 1650. So if I want to find the marginal cost, that means I'm going to have to find the derivative of this cost function. And so C is going to be C prime of X. Uh, that will drop off. I mean, again, I think um, this would be a one, one times 500, and then the X drops, and then two X. And then we would just find C prime of 1650 again and plug that in here. And when you do that, you will get uh, 3,800. 
and so and then again this is the cost to produce this is the approximate cost to produce the um, 1651st item if you want the exact one you would do 1651 that cost minus this cost um, but the marginals give you an approximation of that um, for D we're looking for the production level that will minimize the average cost so what that means is I need to if I'm trying to minimize the average cost that means I'm looking for where it would be like the the low part of that a min um, so I need to take my average cost function, which I will write down for my last page. So there's my average cost function. And so to find um, the production level that will minimize this, I need to take the derivative and then find that min. So um, we'll do C bar prime. And so this is like a little one. So one times one equals one. And then the X drops, that's constant, so it's gone. Uh, negative 1 times here, and then take one off the exponent to get negative 2. And then what we need to do is figure out where this is 0, because that's going to be either a high point um, or a low point. So let's do 0 equals 1 minus that. And then I'm going to bring this piece over, and I think I'll write this downstairs because x to the negative 2 is really 1 over x squared. So when I come over here with it, I'm going to write it like this. And that, so now I can show you, I'm going to clear my fractions by multiplying both sides by x squared. So now that cancels, and I got 1690 equals x squared. And then from there, I can root both sides. Um, and if I do that, that came out to x equals 130. So when I do the root, this technically has, this is a plus or minus, um, but what are we actually looking for? We're looking for the production level that will minimize the average cost. Um, I'm not going to make 130, negative 130 of something. Um, so that's why we only have to worry about the positive root. Um, and so then the other thing is, so great, I found this is this is a turning point on the graph, but it could be a min or it could be a max. Um, so I need to do the second derivative test right here, uh, right there, um, and then see if, it, if I have a maximum or a minimum. So taking my second derivative, uh, the 1 would drop out, negative 2 times negative will make positive, and then 2 times that value comes out to 33,800, and then take another one off the exponent, and that gets us to x to the negative 3, or you can think of this as, as this. And that's our second derivative. So now if I put um, our, our units produced in, you can see that c... Um, this is going to be a positive value, so this is greater than zero. And when it's greater than zero, that means it's um, concave up, and that means we have our, our minimum. So then that gets us to part E, and for part E, we're going to um, the minimal average cost. So now... This is the number of units that made the average cost the least. Um, coming back here, find the production level that will minimize the average cost. So this is units that will do that. And now it's asking, what is that average cost? So what that means is we need to put um, this many units back into our average cost function, which was... Um, Okay, so there was our average cost from function from back here. And so now um, we found that 130 units is what's going to minimize the average cost. And now we want to know what that, that cost ends up. So that means we're going to find C bar of 130. And then chunk all that in the calculator and I got 760 for my average cost.